Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gate Today. Today we're going to talk a little business and we are here with Richard Jones, the co-founder of Gray Jones Media. How are you? I'm great. It's really good to see you, Matt. You too. You and I were doing this uh, this interview together and we're in the world of business, but we should we should make no bones about it. We are friends. We have come to yeah. know each other over the years and I know I, re- I very much enjoy our time together. And I- oh, me too. That's very good of you to say. Thank you. And uh, but that's that's the beauty of it and the nature of it is that here we are in the business world, but you know there there really is a, a strong personal component to it. And um, but even even before we jump into everything you've done, you guys do, you guys are you guys are very good at seeing you know your your media company, Gray Jones Media, um, but you're very good at being able to understand the balance between you know print and online and website, but also social media. And you guys have really been one of I think one of the few that really balanced that out well. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's been a journey. You know, we when we started, our, our beginnings are with Beowulf Magazine uh, coming up, gosh, in, in September, we'll be 12 years old, which is is wonderful and crazy to think about. But we were, what what started that off was very much the the idea that print was becoming very difficult. And every, every time a print magazine closed, the ones that were left behind were having to pay more to print their magazines because of the paper pricing and all that kind of stuff. So it became very much a my realization that we we needed, you know, uh, I mean, Bebel didn't ever start as a print. It looked like print at the beginning, but it was all designed to be on a computer or an iPad and, yeah. you know, slide along as if you're reading it like a real magazine, if you like, but cl- also be able to click the the advertisements and click through to the website. So it's very, for us, that was kind of the transformational moment. And then we've learned more and more about how to really activate on the digital side. I mean, we would probably consider ourselves not that digitally uh, uh, experts, but we're experts at what we do and what the little bits that we do know. And then people like you have helped along the way in your expertise in social media and what you've guided us on. So it, it's been it's been a journey, but it's been great because, you know, we've, we've been at that, we've been technological without having to be too expertise in technology. You know, there's some great help out there. There's great help from companies like you and yeah. obviously just, you know, the website, stuff that happens that is in the background that again i'm not the expert on but um we have great people that support us on that yeah well uh for anybody who's wondering we're going to talk about bears and gamers but uh uh which at first folks would be like what do those have in common and uh and it'll be you but no in, <laughs> but in general um the bears uh in the bear world and the and the community i don't think it was very very much understood for a long time but i think uh I think especially from what I see that you're doing on social media, the fact that you don't just throw your articles out there, but you're actually, you're working with event pr- promoters and posting a lot of their artwork and you're kind of engaged with them and their your fans. So you've turned it m- much more into a two-way street. So you've formed a relationship. And I find that the bear community is probably one of the strongest online when it comes to being very relationship oriented. I think that's a good, a good way of looking at it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think what we pride ourselves on is that the team uh, at Bear World, for instance, while I'm gaming, we're part of that community. You know, I think because we've been at the beginnings of those communities, we were kind of not presented. So if you looked at an advocate for 20 years ago or, or 15 years ago, maybe they would have talked a little bit about the bears, but it wasn't their focus. So we were kind of a little bit hidden from, from the world. We had our own groups and everything else. And then when we came along 12 years ago, began to shine a light um, on the lifestyle of what a bear could be. And then five years ago, uh, the gaming community, we did the same. So it, it's that kind of, I think you've got to be part of the community to really be able to speak to anybody in in an, in an authentic way um, because we were creating these magazines because we we were looking for them and didn't find them. So we created them for ourselves as, as well as for the communities that we knew. Yeah, but you've now come out with a kind of a, you can elaborate more on the on where it comes from, this, a study talking about that both of these niches combined, bears and gamers, really uh, are now valued at $400 billion a year in the US alone. And they kind of- yeah index higher than the rest of the LGBT community when when it comes to that sort of uh, income spend and so forth. Absolutely. I think, you know, we, because there are audiences there, the, the, that's the knowledge that we have. But it's quite fascinating when you look at what, what people put the queer community into is into kind of like a niche audience. And I think when we started to look at the numbers and we started to realize that the audiences that we reached and their spending power far goes beyond being just a kind of a little bit of DNI spend or a little bit of kind of or a little bit of niche spend. We're the, the two communities, there's a little bit of crossover into the bear and the gaming community. I think that's kind of why we we, we do both. But the two communities spend so much. Um certainly the gamers spend a lot on kind of the gaming stuff. So like the Xboxes and the games themselves and things like that. But then when you go on to look at their spending on 
um, food and drink and clothing and kind of the like the stuff that we all spend money on, it yeah. becomes very powerful. And the same with the bear community. You know, you look at what the bears are spending their money on, and we're very, you know, they're very passionate on, on their tech. Um, you, know, you know, and obviously buy food and drink and go on holiday and and buy cars and and all the things that we do. So when you start looking at that spending power, we become such a powerhouse, especially combined. Um, and as you said, it's for, it's a it's a combined value of four hundred billion dollars spend yeah. a year from those two communities. And it, it it we just wanted to shout about that and say, you know what? We kind of knew that we kind of knew what we did, but I, I, we want to tell people it's been such a crazy year since last Pride and the issues around kind of corporate spending inside Pride. And we wanted to just say, look, you know, it, we get we we understand all of the kind of the machinations around that and different things, but we just want to say, look, we reach these people. You've got products that you want to promote to these people. We we can make that work. What you know, it it isn't just DNI anymore. You know, yeah. with some clever thought, some clever conversations, how can we be that you know conduit for you to to reach that community um, in an authentic way and in 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 a, in a way where it's the kind of products that communities would want to buy or participate in or whatever. Yeah, but just like you said, even when you're talking about tech, that really ties into everything else you're doing as a media company because. Um, I would I would agree that the the bear community um, like gamers are very comfortable with technology and you see that through all their social media whenever they're especially there's so many events there's so many bear events that are yeah. I mean, this New York New York for Pride I know there's a whole series of them and urban bears and and yeah. uh, so many groups but they're but the way they're able to um, I think they stand out uh, as a community when it comes to not just sharing on Instagram and Facebook and so forth but also being I, I go back to that part about being engaged with each other you just see that they very much are posting in in community groups and community whether and that could even be on um x and so forth and the amount of content and the amount of the amount of uh the way they amplify it amongst each other it's i think it's unrivaled in any other community that i've ever seen online that's that's really that's really great to hear i think you see that maybe from your end of it a little bit more than we do but yeah i mean i i think when you're part of a community that was not welcome at certain points in history inside of you know, the wider queer community, or you had that feeling, you do band together and you do create that strength. And I think that really is where a lot of this has come from, that that we, the way a community can be divided within itself, which is a great shame, but that's, you know, that's very much a human nature thing. But I think that's what's created the powerhouse of the of the, of the bear community is that need to want to belong. And, I, and that's kind of where we've had that success with Bear World Magazine. And then the gaming community as well. Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of gamers... I think the, the the thought about the gaming community is that it's a little bit of a younger crowd, but actually it kind of, the core age range of gamers is kind of like 30 to 50. You know, if you were playing Atari when it came out, um, what was it, 35 years ago, well, you're probably my age now. So the gaming community does have obviously a youthful side, but it does go up to this age range that, that, that we're at in, in our 50s. So the great thing with that is we spread around, you know, the gaming community is spread around the world and through technology and social media can feel much more like a, a, a closer community, even though it's actually a global community itself. So things like our Digi Pride and our Gaming Live that are digital conventions and digital celebrations um, create community within that as well, which is great because you can have a million people come to Digi Pride or Gaming Live um, that you wouldn't have had come to a real life event because it's you know hard to bring all those global communities together. But we managed to do it with technology, which is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and and through the through the pandemic, we created digi, digital bear events as well. So we were able to do that during that toughest time, and I think that's just you know made us kind of keep that kind of thing going. Yeah, and that, that's the thing uh, you touched on the events, but you guys, uh, you know, in the gaming world, you you uh, produce and create one of the largest uh, game LGBT gaming um, events out there, the Gaming Awards, and um, and that's been going on for a few years. But I love the fact that not only do I see what you're doing out there working with all these various gamers out there to kind of bring their 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 product and their their personalities to light, but you're also working with a lot of corporate sponsors that are really jumping on to really, you know, team up and and tap into this market as well. Yeah, I I think that the before we kind of existed as gaming magazine, um, there were many groups that were kind of formed to look after kind of like women in games and POC people in games, but there wasn't anything going on to kind of support the, the queer community in the gaming, in the corporate gaming world or, 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 you know, the gaming community as it were. So when we came along, the reason we existed was there was a need for that. How could the corporate world and the, the kind of, um, the kind of advocacy, advocacy groups inside the corporate world of ga the games world 
help the, the queer community, you know, their, their, their audience, the people, you know, the, the problem, you know, they were seeing problems in the chat rooms of bullying and everything else, but they, they didn't really know how to tackle that um, effectively. And that's kind of how gaming was born. It was like, well, let's create community through a very specific magazine um, that does speak to that community and pull people together and be a way for the corporate world to kind of show their care for, you know, within tying up with DNI that, that was, you know, looking to be um, more involved, but didn't really know how to get involved on a, on a bigger scale. And it kind of came through us. And that's kind of where the success has come for gaming at that beginning. Um, I mean, we launched just before the pandemic. We launched in June 1919. So we had started at a point where, we were looking to do mini live events at mini prides and things like that. With the pandemic happening, we had to switch to digital stuff pretty much straight away. And actually we got a lot of support from a lot of the corporate world because they felt, well, so, so we could still talk to this audience that we want to talk to, um, even though kind of the world has gone in the way that it had gone. Um, and it really formed some great relationships with some corporate um, sponsors and partners and different things over the years. So, you know, we're, we're five years old this month um, and the Gaming Awards goes out digitally. In fact, um, I'm not sure when this is going out, but when we're recording it, um, Gaming Awards is tomorrow, um, which will be on all different channels. We're partnering with IGN. Um, we're going out on our own channels. We've got Spanish language closed captioning to help to, to the reach. For, so the reach is um, is phenomenal because of the partners that we have. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's great. Yeah, I... I... I totally get it. And, uh, and that fact, that's what you're, what you were mentioning when you're talking about your kind of your journey and your history, uh, from through the pandemic and then where we're at today, my only takeaway on that is also going to be that I think, I think we're learning uh, th that was quite a disruption. Um, but the disruption, I mean, I think we all agree on that, but the disruption, um, the disruption and how that affected our balance of real world events and things that we were planning to do in the real world and things that we continue to do after the things started to open up and how that balances out with what we learned that we were able to do online, which was these zoom connections and remote work and, and so forth. But the way that, the way that we started to really find meaningful connections through technology and social media and so forth, because they sort of rose to the occasion as well. So I think just moving forward, even where we're at today, moving forward, it's going to be very interesting to see how, how this kind of transition continues to evolve. And I think there's going to be a lot of great things that come out of it. Totally. I think what whatever's going on in the world and whatever, we do, you know, we want community. People want community. And I think if you be that live, you know, be that in real life, you know, locally to where you are, or if you can have that digitally, you know, I think I think obviously with the gamers, gamers are used to digital products. They're used to being in a digital world. So I think that that, that creating digital events isn't so difficult to communicate to that that community and in terms of, you know, understanding how to be inside it so that was a you know that that's a lucky thing for that particular community at that particular time um but it carries on you know we, I, I think our goal at the beginning of that would be oh we'll do digital and then we'll go back to real life to be honest the digital way of doing stuff our digital events our digital awards means we can reach more people yeah. um because you can bring together people from around the world in one moment um in a digital way and that's phenomenal because we couldn't do that doing a live expo in any city in any one in given town nobody would get on a plane not the amount of people that you'd need to make it work in the same way would be thousands of flights and thousands of people traveling which you which not everybody can do so it, it's been great to see the success of something that happened by accident um which is funny because that's how bear world was created and originally was by an accident too so you know we're living living some similarities there we just gotta we gotta sit back and watch and hope that the some of the brands in corporate world starts to uh, uh, understand some of this and come back because that's been the big story over the last year is just how they've kind of taken a, some a sideline approach based on lots that's been happening in these divisive times. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that 2025 after the election that things will start to pick up. I'm sure everybody else is like, I need it sooner, but you know, I'm, I'm yeah. hope, trying to be hopeful. Same, I think. Yeah, you know, we we continue to have conversations with different companies, and of course. I think companies don't have, have to respond to all kinds of things at, at all kinds of times that we may not be familiar with. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, you've just got to keep the channels of communication open and, and, and work with them to get them to understand the need. Again, get them to understand that it's not just a moment of, oh, look, we just have to spend a few dollars in pride. Uh, most, I think a lot of companies we talk to get it and are not, you know, just a pride spend. Um, they do want to do something richer. They've got lots of teams working with inside their organizations that want something more than that. So that's great. But I think for a lot of other companies, it really is having that conversation, trying to get 
to explain to them that, you know, um, working with us, trying to reach these groups of people and beyond us, like other parts of the queer community too, not just us, you know, it, it's a worthwhile thing to do. You will gain so much loyalty. You will gain so much brand loyalty and spend that, you know, I, I feel is stronger than any other part of the world, you know, yeah, yeah. that uh, part of different communities around the world or, or around the USA. Even. Yeah, no, I'm with you. No, I think this is great stuff. And, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, going online to check out what, what what happens with the gaming awards. Even if I don't, I'm not able to watch it, watch it live or streaming, but I'm able to I'm able to see all the highlights through social. Oh, and, uh, love, be love. No, this is fantastic, and uh, I also look forward to being able to uh, when I when I see you again in the in the near future. Definitely, yeah. But no, thanks so much for being here and kind of sharing a bit of uh, your story and what you guys are up to with our audience, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Matt. I really appreciate the time and opportunity to, to chat to you and, and get some messaging out there. Thank you so very much. Thank you. It feels good, so good.